Hi, everybody. Thanks a million. Um, now, while Alison and Rob are asking you to do really practical stuff, I'm going to get you to do a little bit of thinking, philosophical thinking. So I'm sure after last night, you'll all be delighted to, to actually uh, to do that kind of thing. But um, this is one of the questions that I get asked quite a bit around RVLE Moodle. And uh, maybe in the room, some of you might get asked that as well, particularly if there's maybe a change in... Um, uh, there might be a change in management or there might be a reshifting of departments and things like that. Uh, but after having been asked this a couple of times, I just decided, oh, here, you know, are we really asking the right questions of Moodle? So I wanted to explore that a little bit with you today and see maybe what you think of it or if you have any um, uh, pearls of wisdom for me maybe by the end of the, the, um, the, the presentation. That's my Twitter handle as well, either during the presentation or afterwards. If you have anything to say about it, please uh, contact, uh, connect with me. Uh, I'd love to kind of continue the conversation. So in terms of kind of situating me, you're getting a little road trip uh, through Ireland. You were in uh, Dublin just uh, in the previous presentation. This is where we are in Athlone. Martin mentioned OER 19. That was in Galway, so the other side. So it's a little road trip across the, the middle of Ireland. And that's our campus. Um, we were one of 13 um, institutes of technology in higher education in Ireland. Those numbers are dwindling because we're, we're changing. We are we're repurposing and renaming, and we have uh, technological universities now as well on that landscape. So uh, the numbers are dropping, but we are, we're still currently an institute of technology. Um, and as I say, that's our campus. It's small. Um, that's we, we've about 5,000, between 5,000 and 6,000 uh, full-time and part-time students across a range of disciplines. We have um, faculty of science, faculty of business and engineering, and we have both a strong research focus because we, um, we have level 10 programs, and those of you who are familiar with the NFQ framework for um, Ireland's National Frameworks for Qualifications, we're on this side. So the yellow and the, and the purple, that's us, uh, right up to level 10. But we also very, very have a very strong industry focus, so um, lots of uh, applied programs with placements and so on, and really lots of links with local industry. We're really embedded in the community, and that's something we're quite proud of. Um, my role has also changed quite a bit. I started back in 2000 as a French and German lecturer, and now I am that. So it's slightly different, um, but I am currently in the graphic design department working with students, and uh, I also teach digital applications in the Faculty of Business. So. Um, I wear many hats. Um, but since 2007, I've also had the role of education developer, and I always kind of try and grapple a little bit with these titles. So in the room, you know, are you a learning technologist? You want to raise your hand if you're a learning technologist? Any educational developers? Um, what else have we got? Instructional designers? You've got a three or four different hats, yeah. And it depends on the day of the week which one I choose, because the jobs, you know yourselves, the job is quite varied, yeah? So at the moment, I'm going with educational developer with a strong technology focus. I think that covers quite a bit. Uh, and I'm kind of Moodle teaching support as well since 2007. Um, and I have to do a shout out to Anthony, who is also here from Athlone IT, who is the, the brains behind us, the Moodle administrator, and does all the techie stuff as well. So, um, But we have been working together quite a, quite a long time, trying to help people to get to grips with Moodle um, and uh, see how we could use it in lots and lots of different ways. And that's what this is about. So it's kind of like a little, um, a jigsaw, if you like, of the kinds of ways that we use Moodle. So you've got your standard undergraduate. I'm going to have a look at... Uh, my pointer here. So the standard undergraduate programs that you're all familiar with. We've also got our postgraduate programs again up to level 10. Again, you're all familiar with that as well. But we've been trying to branch out really to try and be an inclusive institute so that we have um, our academic supports. We have an academic writing page and an academic writing centre. And we try and encourage students to go there to use Turnitin as a formative tool to look at the resources that we have then in terms of improving their skills. And we also have peer-assisted student support. Do any of you know um, PASS? Manchester was one of the places where PASS actually originated. So it's, um, it's a support system, a peer system, where second-year students help first-year students um, settle in in college. So we use Moodle for that as well, and the, and the PASS mentor is really actively involved in looking at how educational technology might help them. 
Um, we have uh, recently as well, we have kind of uh, short courses, and I was delighted to see Stephen's presentation yesterday because we started looking at CPD, particularly for our placement supervisors, because they need that kind of um, on-the-job knowledge, if you like. They don't necessarily need an accredited program. They need something short and sweet, and we're using Moodle for that as well. So plenty of hats. And the one we've started as well, uh, down there in the bottom left-hand corner, are badges. Believe it or not, we're only just using badges. How many of you are using badges? For ages, I suppose. Yeah? I don't know. But for us, anyway, we've only just started using badges, and they are great. They're great. So I'm delighted to see that our badges have been awarded. And our badges have been awarded to um, visiting Chinese academics. So they're going home uh, in June with two badges, one for learning, teaching, and assessment, and the other one for technology-enhanced learning. And they're thrilled with them as well. We couldn't offer it. Excuse me, we couldn't offer accreditation, but we could offer a micro-credential. And that's where I think that we're really looking into those kind of, um, uh, those achievements or recognition of achievements. So that's kind of us as well. And we have our PG DIP. We have our accredited education program with lots of modules um, where Moodle and lots of different technologies are embedded in the system. And I suppose for me, the key thing is it's embedded in our practice. Um, we kind of don't really think about it too much. And I'll get to why that's important in a little bit. So this is where we started. Picture it. Friday afternoon, when nobody else wants to be around, there were six technology enthusiasts in a very old computer lab in AIT, uh, and two software engineers had found a new tool, and they wanted to show it to us. That new tool was Moodle. I was teaching French and German, and if you can imagine, I was trying to find authentic resources, and I was constantly having to point students to a URL here and a link there and so on, and all of a sudden, Moodle was going to give me a space to put it all in to structure it and construct activities around. So I was thrilled, and I haven't looked back. However, along the way, we had this and this and this and this and this. And there are a few more that I could have put in there as well. Policies and strategies and robes up maps and more. Do you ever feel that you're just bogged down a little bit with all the, all the policies and all the strategies? The intentions are good, but it stifles innovation a little bit. And when you find that you've got to be responding to, whenever ever you have an innovative idea, you've got to be responding to a strategy, find the page in the strategic plan where that links to it, then you'll get the funding. Yeah? So this is kind of where we're at at the moment. And there are more to come. Um, and I'm sure that it's similar for a lot of you as well. Um, and, and from that point of view, I, I suppose I was thinking that we're reflecting now, we, um, we are, I suppose, what are we now, 15 years, is that right? 15 years using Moodle um, last year. And uh, we're kind of trying to think, well, where are we going to go now? And last year, I suppose you're asking, what, why on earth is this, or what has this got to do with Moodle? Last year, I was looking at the website after the Moodle moot, and I came across the core values. Was it last year that Moodle intro uh, Martin introduced the core values? I came across the core values on Moodle, and I, it was a bit of a light bulb moment, because for me, in our institution, Moodle has become so embedded in practice, it's another, dare I say it, another IS, just a system. Yeah, or so we thought. And all of a sudden, here we had a, a group of people talking about core values, aligning themselves to UN sustainable goals, and then really talking about a mission statement. And that was quite transformative for me because it made me think about where we stood. So getting bogged down in all of this, it made me step back and look at what Moodle was trying to do and then see, well, where do we fit in? Or does it even align to where we're going? And I don't know if you saw it yesterday, but I misquoted Martin. Uh, I wanted to change the world, not just improve it. So in my head somewhere, as an educator, that's what I want to do. Um, so I, I had a look at the core values, and I went back to our own strategic plan. Do you all know your own mission statement from your institution? Could you quote it for me? Yeah, your core values, your goal? I didn't. I didn't. So I went back and I had a look at it. This is ours. I'll give you a minute to read it. I've highlighted the word impact because I think in the current climate, we really do need to have a different kind of impact in education, particularly higher education. So it's broad ranging. And that was our strategic plan up to 2018. We're doing another one now, just to see if we can follow on from that. And that's our compass. That's supposed to guide us, okay? Do you always go back to your, your institute vision or goal when you're thinking about a new and innovative idea? This is supposed to guide us. 
Those are our values. I'm not sure if you can see them, but we have the inclusive focus, excellence in teaching and research, partnership, collaboration and teamwork, transparency and accountability, and professionalism, integrity, truth and collegiality. That's our, our, our catchphrase, if you like. Uh, truth is great and it will prevail. Just think about that one in today's context. A lot of fake news going around. So those are our values, but I wanted to see, did Moodle's values align with ours? So I did a mapping exercise. You're all familiar with these. I think they're incredible. I think as a compass for uh, a company to have, it's an incredible set of values. And they do match, they do map. Um, and I was delighted to see it. I was kind of hoping they would, because otherwise we, we were in trouble. But uh, they do match. And I was able to point, um, move them around and see that, yes, we have aligned our values. Uh, and yes, we're on the same page, which is, uh, which is really important for me. So what does that mean? Does it really matter? if our uh, values are aligned. And this is quite high level thinking, I suppose. Um, on the day-to-day -day basis, this is the kind of stuff that we're doing. Um, the can it do this tends to come from EMT, where people aren't using Moodle on a regular basis, but they are the decision makers. So the key decisions they make are cost, reliability, support, availability, which you would expect. Moving on to the educators, and I asked them that. Um, we did a, a survey a couple of years ago, and those of you who are from Ireland would know that the VLE project, um, there are two papers that I put at the end of it, um, about staff and student impressions of the VLE. And I suppose what staff really wanted was ease of access, reliability, and good training so they could use the tools. And students wanted access to content, flexibility, and different kinds of assessment ideas. So very much the micro level, day-to-day -day running of the business, not really talking about high level um, philosophical statements like visions and goals, but it does matter. It does matter that we're singing, on the same hymn, uh, singing from the same hymn sheet, because otherwise, this kind of thing can happen. Do you recognize it? Yeah, the latest digital bling. Are you guilty of it? Yeah, you know that the magpie is attracted to shiny things. Um, well, I found that of late, um, there are lots and lots of companies looking for, um, vying for attention, and it's who has the shiniest, newest thing. And if you have it, and you can actually promote it well enough, then you're more than likely going to get an audience, particularly amongst the group who are the decision makers. So. I was trying to counteract that. And I was trying to figure out, why is it that people aren't looking at Moodle? Moodle has all of those things. You know, we can do all of the, the kind of the shiny new things. But I actually decided, I suppose I came to the realization, Moodle's like a comfy pair of slippers. It's the thing that we've been using it since 2003. We're really comfortable with it. It's embedded in our practice. We've started learning about new things in a really organic way. It's conversations over coffee, meeting in the corridor, actually looking to see, well, you know, um, we're sharing maybe a, a program. What are you using? Can I do that too? So it has been really, really organic in its growth. We're almost at 100% capacity in terms of our teaching staff, and that's approximately 200 people. There'll always be the laggards. There'll always be the people who just won't engage, but that's okay, because that's life. But we really, we've got a really good engagement rate of um, from the academics. And what we valued as well was that teacher autonomy. You know, academic freedom is really important for, um, uh, for faculty. And we've let them do their own thing. We haven't imposed templates. There's no top-down kind of decisions being imposed. What's happening is the students are saying, can you use it? And the staff are saying, well, how do you do that? It's going to make my life easier. It's going to make my teaching better. So we're not shouting it from the rooftops. It's kind of a surreptitious group. We're underground. And that has had a negative effect because there's a lack of visibility in the upper echelons of our institute. And there's also a perceived lack of innovation. We haven't been shouting from the rooftops all the cool stuff we've been doing, but now there's a perception that we're actually not doing anything at all. So the focus is on the wrong stuff. So what do we need to do? Um, first off, I wanted to look at those high-level questions. What do we want from Moodle? 
Okay, what do we want from our LMS? We always call it a virtual learning environment as opposed to a learning ma management system because it brings everything together. We've used lots of social tools, we've used lots of other tools, but Moodle brings it all together. It's our one-stop shop for our students uh, and it's a platform that they can easily access and particularly with a mobile app, it's readily available for students. So we use a mobile app, so we'll probably push it a little bit more after the Moodle Moot. Um, how can Moodle help us get where we want to go? Think of our compass, what do we want to do? We want to have an impact across research and industry. And then can we learn from the wider Moodle community? I think what I've taken away from this Moodle Moot is that real sense of community, and I'll be at the uh, Moodle Net workshop later on, uh, just to see how that can happen. I think we've been in our little silo and we haven't really reached out, and I think it's time for us to do that. I haven't been at a moot in about five years, and things have changed and moved on quite a bit, so I'm delighted to, to, that I came back. And then this shared uh, vision of what higher education can do. I know it's quite high, le high level, I know it's quite philosophical. My God, look at what's happening nowadays. Look at what's happening. Pick a country and think about the impact that we could have in higher education on the future leaders of our countries. So high-level stuff. But then, let's go down to the practicalities. We have Moodle, what we call champions or coaches. They're going to be getting involved with MoodleNet. Um, our mobile app, we haven't really pushed it. We're definitely going to look at that a little bit more. Um, I think we need to start shouting from the rooftops what we've been doing. So I, I picked up on Stephen's CPD model yesterday. Uh, so thanks, Edinburgh and AP. And, um, any other suggestions? What else could we do to make ourselves more visible? Not even on a wider scale, but even within our own institute. We've done our own mini Moodle Moot, but it was a while ago, so showcasing things as well. But it's a comfy pair of slippers, guys, so we have to make it a little bit trendier now. Um, so, can it do this? I would argue, of course it can, and so much more. Thanks very much, guys. So we've got a couple of minutes for questions, if you just raise your hand and Bob and Helen will run around with their microphones and come and find you. If you want to tell me what your mission statement is or what your goals or values are, if you have them off the tip of your tongue. <laughs> Thanks Geraldine, I really enjoyed that. Um, it's interesting talking about the mission statements. I, I don't know what they are, I think I can probably name a couple of the core values because whenever we put a paper to the LTA committee we have to say which one it's aligned to yeah. uh, and I think um, it's a good technique and um, one of the things we've been trying to do on our blog site is well we've got hints and tips, news and events and the third one is academic spotlight articles and we've really failed to, to get enough of them. Okay. Really just showcasing how people are are using it so I think this has just given me a good idea to try well I've always wanted to reinvigorate that but also say you know this is supporting you know this particular value so thanks that was a really good reminder yeah I think it's just that we, we just lacked visibility and there's lots of really good stuff going on but we haven't been showcasing it so I think we need to get the word out a little bit more and I think that's what from this this is what I've taken anyway any more questions there so if you do have strategies like Stephen or anything else that you'd like to share, something that works really, really good in your institute, rather than having the conversation about changing an LMS, and you know that change management is something that I don't necessarily want to go down the road of, but if there's something else, then uh, please feel free on Twitter to, to give me a shout out and let me know. Could you Thanks. go back to your Twitter handle, will, yeah. just so we've got it on the screen there? I'll have to go right back, will I? I should have done that at the end as well, yeah, sorry now. This is really bad. It's at GS McDermott. I've been tweeting a little bit, so. Ah. Oh, someone's going to do it for you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. No, next one up. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I'll do it. I'll do a tweet, and uh, we'll follow up from then. Geraldine, okay. just um, from my point of view, having been involved in lots of different strategies and this kind of stuff. Um, it's the storytelling as well yeah. as the, the philosophical kind of stuff. Um, and really good leaders are very good at talking about where we started and the whole story and how it all fits together and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And I think that if you do want to make it 
change, even if you want to, you know, have a refocus on Moodle. Mm. It's about telling that story. It's about saying, like, this is why we chose this. This is our mission. This is our value. So I really appreciate what you did there. Um, I think that's a great approach for anybody who's looking to, like, reinvigorate their Moodle yeah. and to fend off, potentially, someone coming in with a shiny new suit and going, oh, let's get rid of all this. Yeah. And, you know, really bringing in that visibility. Yeah, Fantastic. I think it has given me an opportunity to kind of refocus, as you say, and we'll see where we go from here. So we'll have great okay. things for next year's Moodle. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Thanks a lot.